The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture and uh, pleased to be joined by Brunel Sabrin of Antera Agronomy in one of Antera's canola demonstration plots here in Brunel. Uh, planting canola with a, a planter, it's been done for quite a few years now by some farms here in uh, the Red River Valley. Can you take us through what you're looking at in this demonstration plot, starting with the plant population, the target population here, and, and differences that you found? Sure. Yeah, uh, we've been a number of growers in our area have been using planters now, or have bought planters specifically justified their planters by using them to also not only their corn and soybeans but their canola as well. So, one of the biggest advantages to using a planter is the placement of the seed, and also because of the plate well, indirectly, it's it comes down to germination percentage and. We're getting a lot better germination with our canola, this small seed, by precisely placing it in the ground where it goes. So what were the populations that you looked at here? What is the, the range that you would look at with a planter? So normally most guys with a planter are targeting 250,000 seeds per acre, kind of half of what we would be targeting back in the day looking at uh, using air drills. and So with that we're targeting a five to seven plants per square foot. So what we've done, we've been looking at is how low can we go with canola because the yield in canola is so elastic it has such an ability to fill in gaps and we look at canola council numbers they recommend five to seven plants per square foot and they say a minimum of three to four is needed to get 90 percent or better of your capture your yield potential so what we're doing now is we've tried a couple of different rates looking at in this particular field most of the field was done at 250,000, but we've gone as low as 210 180 150. Okay. so our plant stands have gone down accordingly to almost only three plants per square foot so was there any significant difference there? This, of course, being a, a wet spring in this part of the world? Uh, well, germination percentage was all fairly similar. We didn't see much of a difference in percentage. Where we put less plants, we had less emergence. But uh, the truth, will, or it'll be interesting to see once at harvest time, are we still seeing similar? We've done it in the past, the last couple of years in our research trials, and we haven't seen a whole lot of difference between stand counts at different rates as far in terms of yield but we've the water has been our limiting factor so in a year where well in a lot of our trials across all of our crops the years where we have average or higher yield potential is where these little things can make a big difference when we're having average or below average crops they they tend to be added costs but not necessarily realizing any kind of a benefit to it okay Another uh, factor or treatment you looked at here was planter speed, how, f how fast you were actually driving the planter while, while planting. Did you notice a difference there in terms of uh, emergence or, or what it looked like coming out of the ground? We did not this year. Now the caveat I'll put on that though is we planted on the 18th of June and it came out of the ground in three days. So we had ample soil moisture and it was next ideal conditions. It would be very interesting to try this again when we typically seed it in early May to see if we would see a difference. We went up to nine miles an hour here and did not see a difference in emergence. So that would be considered, most guys will try to keep it seven, five to seven miles an hour just to get more precise placement. Once we get into nine miles an hour, it's harder to get that consistent depth and in the emergence. So it'll be interesting to see. What, what about planting depth? Uh, this year we had, again, plenty of moisture. Is it is it true that we can maybe plant canola deeper than what we originally thought when we used to, when more acres were seeded with a, a drill or a seeder? Yeah, so over the span of my career, generally, we were always trying to target maybe three quarters of an inch for canola planting depth. Now, when we started working with planters, some of the pioneers and planted canola, being as dry as it was, where the top inch was just very, very dry, they said, don't worry about it, chase the moisture, go to inch and a half, inch and three quarter if you have to, it'll be just fine. And lo and behold sure enough and I was expecting that we would be seeing a lot of problems going that deep with emergence but I think just given the planter we don't have that on row packing the the seed is all placed at consistent moisture and so we have that nice even tabletop emergence so and we've seen that here this year too where we had ample moisture but our poorest emergence was at a half an inch instead of inch and a half and two inches so or sorry inch and three quarter okay the next few treatments we want to talk about are, are more about planter setup and, and equipment related. Uh, downforce on the planter, does that make a difference with canola? Downforce will make a difference with canola as it does with any crop. So generally downforce is the, 
extra pressure applied on the metering units to get that consistent depth. So with the planter and having the, the gauge wheels, keeping them snug on the ground. So the trouble we run into generally is if we have too much down pressure, we can cause extra sidewall compaction, which can inhibit root growth. But on a dry year, sometimes more down pressure is better because we pack that, that soil in around that seed so it has better access to moisture to, to germinate. Next on the, on the list, row cleaners on the planter. Uh, I guess it would depend on what type of residue you're planting into potentially, but does that make a difference in terms of what we're seeing here and, and what the canola looks like coming out? Yeah, so typically row cleaners on a planter are meant to move kind of the, move trash away so that we get proper seed to soil contact. We're putting it into soil versus putting it into uh, crop residue, which can cause hair pinning, so on, and other problems. But what we've been finding, like even last year, row cleaners where we have that extra inch of dry topsoil, those row cleaners come in handy with kind of moving some of that soil away so that we can plant into moist soil. And same thing here. In this particular case this year, we're still seeing a difference in the row cleaners because uh, this field was harrowed twice this spring, which typically we try not to do, but we had to this spring to try to get it fit to seed because we were starting to push the deadline of, you know, we're getting into past the middle of June, which is a month later than we would typically put in canola. So we had to harrow twice. Now in this heavy clay soil that caused for a, a lot of compacted soil or dry soil, it almost looks like little marbles, but lots of the really, it doesn't leave a very nice seedbed finish. So having those row cleaners, we were able to move some of that stuff away and plant that canola into nice, firm, moist soil. So. It definitely made a difference. We didn't see a difference so much in the plant stand, but the emergence was much more even, which is also key in terms of herbicide timing, swath timing, fungicide, everything. The more even we can have the crop generally, the higher yielding it will be. Okay. What about row firmers? Same idea with the row firmers. So the row firmers, uh, the idea behind that is it helps push the seed down into the bottom of the furrow or hold it in the bottom of the furrow to keep prevent seed bounce. Uh, typically, again, in our heavy clay soils, row firmers on a wet spring will tend to ball up. And when we think of the, the seed tab, which is just kind of a piece of plastic that uh, drags along in the ground, will build up with ball up with mud and causes all sorts of problem with seed placement. But um, some of the newer planters, technology styles, have rubber wheels that tend to accumulate less mud. So it's not every spring that we can run seed firmers, but when we can, they generally do make a big difference. Okay. Final Finally then, Brunel, uh, row spacing, this entire demonstration plot is on 22 inch row spacing, except for one uh, plot over there where you're on 11 inch, where you doubled up. Any findings there or learnings from narrower row spacing with canola? Uh, that will be a find out at harvest, I guess. <laughs> it's hard to tell you right now. So the idea there is to cover more ground. 22 inch rows is a little bit too wide to maximize the sunlight or sun's potential in terms of converting soil nutrients into seed or yield. So by going 11 inch rows, now we're covering the ground faster. So we should have, it should give us less moisture loss. It should give us less or more weed control. Uh, swathing on 22 inch rows can be scary at times too, because there's less plants there to anchor that swath. It's more susceptible to rolling in the wind. So anything we can do to, you know, there could potentially be a, a yield advantage to narrower row spacing. So that's what we're trying to determine if it's worth running over the field twice. Um, with most planters, you know, 15 is usually the narrowest you can get, except for some custom, it would have to be custom built to get a narrower row spacing. So that's what we're trying to determine now is, is 11 inch row spacing or 10 inch row spacing better than 20. Yeah. And I guess in the long run, if we were to switch to that, you wouldn't want to be running over the field twice from a fuel, pers fuel perspective or compaction perspective. But if, if planters could be made that way, uh, that would be more of the European narrow row style approach, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, with the planter, you know, you were not using a lot of fuel pulling a planter to the, through the ground like we would an air drill, where uh, if we can go seven, eight, nine mile an hour, even though we shouldn't, it might be something that still could be economical in a sense that if we wanted... There's no one spacing that works on all crops, so it, it could be a workaround that we could still use our planter in canola, but then have that wider row spacing for soybeans or corn. Yeah, all right. Any other findings here, Brunel? I guess the, the next thing is to uh, wait for it to be ready to harvest and see what it looks like then. For sure. Um, I mean, we had an event today. We'll have another event this fall, hopefully, that we'll be sharing more of the findings after we've harvested the field and soil sampled and always learning. All right. 
Thank you very much for your time, Brunel. Yo, thank you. Thank you.